you can create some really fun and powerful builds in Ghost of Tsushima. And one of my favorites is what I like to call the Invincible Ghost. My idea with this is to haunt the Mongols by using smoke bomb chain assassinations as often as possible and also being able to bring ourselves back to life if we die, like a real ghost. You can put this build together on any armor, but I do like to use the ghost armor both for its ghost stance perk and the 30% chance for kills to terrify enemies. For the build to work, you'll need the Iron Will technique unlocked, as well as all the assassination upgrades. Iron Will lets you spend 3 resolve to recover from taking lethal damage. So that's how we're going to bring ourselves back to life, but we need to make sure we always have enough resolve to do it. So on the outfit, we're going to use the minor charms of Rejuvenation, Resolve 2, and Silence to boost resolve gains. You could also use resolve 1 in place of one of the others, but silence actually provides a larger resolve gain, and we also want to make sure our minor charms all have different icons. That's because we're also going to equip the charm of versatile skills to double the effectiveness of all our minor charms. Versatile skills only boost minor charms when they're the only one of their category equipped. In other words, all your minor charms need to have different icons if you want each one to get boosted. The charm of versatile skills itself is a utility charm, but you can still equip a minor utility charm and it will be boosted. It's just that all your minor charms need to have different icons. Okay, so those four charms are going to give us a bunch of resolve gain. Now we're going to add the charm of deadly return. This gives us a free copy of the currently equipped quick fire tool each time we resurrect. Keeping with the theme of the build, you'll keep smoke bombs equipped so that when you die, you'll resurrect and instantly have a new smoke bomb to pop smoke. Then you can pull off a chain assassination for 3 easy kills and some resolve. We'll also equip the charm of Ikazuchi no Kami to boost the ghost armor's terrify perk. That'll give us even more easy kills after we come back to life. By the way, I'll link a wiki down below that lists where to get all the charms in the game if you need to find some of these. So to use the invincible ghost build, start by popping smoke and pulling off a triple assassination. Then you can go ahead and finish any terrified enemies. Carry on with the fight a bit if you want to, but at this point you should have at least 3 resolve back and you can literally let yourself get killed on purpose, which is actually how I intended the build to work. Resurrect and we're back where we started, new smoke bomb in hand. So pop smoke and do it all over again. The trick with this build is to make sure you kill enough enemies quickly after resurrecting to ensure you get at least 3 resolve. As long as you have 3 resolve, you pretty much can't die. Of course, you're not totally invincible, but you should be able to get 3 resolve pretty easily if you play the build right. The smoke bomb chain assassinations and finishing terrified enemies are key to getting that resolve. So make sure you have smoke bombs equipped each time you resurrect to get the free one, and you should be golden. Or should I say, ghosted. I find the invincible ghost fun when I want to change up my typical playstyle. But if it feels a little too cheesy for you, you can modify it to make a terrifying ghost build. Swap out the charms of Deadly Return and Resolve for Inari's Might and Fortune. Fortune, boosted by the charm of versatile skills, will make it twice as likely for enemies to become terrified by kills. And Inari's Might will give you a nice melee damage boost to help make those kills faster with normal combat. Oh, and if your charm of Inari's Might doesn't say massive like mine does, it's because because you need to honor more Inari shrines to upgrade it. Honoring additional shrines actually upgrades the Charm of Silence too, so you should definitely make sure to do that. The Charms of Silence and Inari's Might are a couple of the best ones in the game. Now, the Terrifying Ghost build doesn't require as specific of a combat loop as the Invincible Ghost, but you do want to make sure you're taking out enemies often as that's going to be the main trigger to terrify others. But let's switch gears and check out the Infinite Arrow build. Of course, any good Archer build is going to start with Tadayori's armor so we can get faster knocking and reload and additional concentration. The basis for this build are the two swift return charms, which together give us a 50% chance to recover arrows that don't hit enemies. However, you can make that a 100% chance by also equipping the two charms of fortune, and then you can double it again by using the charm of abundant reserves. So now you can just shoot arrows into the ground and pick up twice as many as you shot. If you equip the charm of Sugaru's sight, then you can shoot three and pick up six. Plus, of course, then you also get access to that cool triple arrow shot and headshot lock-on 
which, by the way, has a nice synergy with the Tatiori's Armor perk for restoring concentration from headshots. So with the Infinite Arrow build, you can roll up near a group of enemies, shoot a bunch of heavy arrows into the ground to make sure you're well stocked, and then just go to town nailing everyone. It's pretty fun, and it's one of my favorite builds to whip out when I'm feeling like I need a break from melee combat. But if Kunai are more your style, you can put together an Infinite Kunai build too. The charm of Ryujin will give you a free Kunai every time you pull off a perfect dodge. To make that easier, you can use the Sarugami armor, which has a perk to increase the timing window on perfect dodges, and the charm of Mizu no Kami that does the same. We'll also use the two charms of advantage to boost the damage of your ghost weapons, fleet foraging to have a chance to get free kunai from melee kills, and the charm of silence just to give you some resolve gain to make the build a bit more versatile. The trick to using this build effectively is remembering to do perfect dodges often enough. That's the main way you're going to get more kunai. You also want to make sure you rush in and finish enemies off after they get staggered from kunai. The sprint strike skill helps a bit with that, but I actually prefer to use the moon stance tornado heavy attack combo since it sweeps the katana around and can finish off multiple enemies at once. Now, if you feel like you can nail the perfect dodges easily enough, you can swap out the charm of Mizu no Kami for the charm of hidden blades. The timing on perfect dodges will get tighter, but you'll be able to throw five kunai at once instead of the normal max of three. But if you'd rather use your katana instead of kunai, the unlimited heavenly strike build might just be the most broken one in the game. Heavenly strike is arguably the best special attack because it's unblockable and only costs one resolve. So if we can figure out how to keep your resolve up, theoretically you can just keep doing heavenly strikes forever. To do that, you'll want to start with either the Sarugami or Kensi armor for their resolve gain perks. Then equip the two charms of fortunate return and fortune. Altogether, these four give us a 60% chance to regain one resolve when spending one to do Heavenly Strike. On top of that, we can add the charms of Resolve 2 and Silence to boost resolve gains even further. You might miss a recharge here and there, but the amount of resolve you gain from this build overall gives you virtually unlimited Heavenly Strikes. So you can just cruise around and slice everyone down without even breaking a sweat. And it's pretty broken in duels as well. The opponents really can't do anything about Heavenly Strikes, so you'll be able to take them down really fast. We've been emphasizing resolve pretty heavily in the build so far, but sometimes you end up low on resolve after an encounter, and it would be nice to have a quick way to charge it up before your next fight. To do that, I like to take an unused armor and equip this set of three charms. The key one is perfect landing, which lets you regain resolve when dodging into a roll just before hitting the ground from a high jump. You'll need the safe landing technique unlocked for this. If you're using a DualSense controller, you'll get a rumble at the moment you need to hit dodge, but even without a DualSense, it's pretty easy to get the hang of it. So outside of combat, you can just yeet Jin off a small cliff and roll it out to regain pretty much all your resolve. It's not a combat build, but it's a nice quick way to get your resolve charged up. The broken armor is probably the most practical option for this resolve recharge build, since it doesn't have any perks at all. But I personally like using the Fundoshi. I just get a kick out of the Mongols watching a naked man jumping off cliffs like a maniac. And I know it seems like a waste to leave the other charm slots empty, but trust me, this combo of three charms is the fastest resolve gain you can get. But let's get back to the real builds. If you want to go for something tankier focused on healing, you might be tempted to grab charms that reduce damage, but again, it's actually more effective to focus on resolve. Start with the Samurai Clan armor for its damage reduction, health increase, and resolve gain perks. Then add the charms of Resolve 2, Silence, and Rejuvenation. We'll fill in our last minor charm slot with Inari's Might to get a health and melee damage increase. Using versatile skills, we'll double all of those minor charms and then we round out the build with the charm of Izanami, which allows you to revive yourself at 50% health using the Iron Will technique. So when you take lethal damage, you should have enough resolve to use Iron Will to bring yourself back, and then you'll be at half health immediately. As long as you're not taking damage super often, it's pretty hard to die with this build, and you should have enough extra resolve on hand to use the Heavenly Strike and Dance of Wrath abilities fairly often. This build is nice when you're trying to sharpen your combat skills. It gives you plenty of opportunity to practice without dying and starting over all the time. But now, let's check out my favorite build. Unlike the specialized ones we've been looking at, my main build is more well-rounded, but certainly focused on playing more aggressively. I start with the Sarugami armor for all its perks, and add Inari's Might for a solid 
boost to melee damage and health. I also like having reliable resolve gains so I can easily heal and use abilities. So I equip rejuvenation and silence. I also like the charm of enduring affliction, which is probably one of the most slept on charms in the game. It increases the duration and damage of status effects, but what most people don't realize is when enemies get stunned, like from breaking their block, or knocked down, like from kicking them or blasting them down with a bomb, those count as status effects. Of course, things like burning also count, but once you realize stun and knockdown are status effects, you start to see how strong the charm of enduring affliction really is. And we can make it twice as strong, along with all our other minor charms, by equipping versatile skills. In my last slot, I like using Sugaru's Sight to unlock those awesome triple arrow shots. I find this to be the most well-rounded build for my playstyle. If you're more of a stealthy player though, then you might be interested in the poison build. This is focused on using charms that boost your various methods of poisoning enemies, like the charm of toxic demise, which makes your wind chimes release poisonous gas when an enemy walks over them. Poisoning enemies will often terrify others nearby, and we can boost that chance by using the ghost armor. However, I actually prefer to do this with the Mongol commander since I like having the ghost set up for the invincibility build from earlier. But either way, alongside toxic demise, you'll want Enduring Affliction to extend the length of status effects. Primarily, that's going to be helpful when using the hallucination darts on the blowgun to make your minion fight longer, and you can make them fight harder with the Charm of Lost Mind, especially when you equip versatile skills to double its effectiveness. In the last slots, I like a Charm of Advantage to boost ghost weapon damage since this is more of a stealthy ninja build, and Yuriko's Keepsake, which gives your arrows a chance to poison enemies, which can be pretty nice against the tougher brutes and leaders. You can just proc them with a few arrows to the body to trigger poison and get easy kills. One of the best ways to use this build is to sneak up to a group and use the hallucination darts to gain a minion or two who are going to be really strong from our charm boosts and just let them go to town on their buddies. For those poison wind chimes, throwing one will attract a single enemy and kill them, which is fine and you can carry a lot of wind chimes if you upgrade your capacity. So you can sneak around and take down one at a time if you want, but if you can manage to get enemies bunched up, it's possible to poison multiple at once. I like to throw out a firecracker to get them to huddle up and then chuck in the wind chime. You want to try to place it so one of them walks over it, which can be a bit tricky, but you'll get at least one of them even if it doesn't work out to poison multiple. And then there's a good chance a few will get terrified and run away anyway. Overall, the poison build is excellent for those who want to play from the safety of the shadows. Now, to get the most out of these builds, you're going to want to know about some secret combat mechanics and advanced tricks the game doesn't tell you about. You can find those in this video right here when it's ready. But for now, you'll want to make sure you're up to speed on all the other tips I wish I knew before I started playing, so I'll link that one for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you over there in just a second.